Uh, well, you, you're you're probably looking for somebody's approval. Mm. I, I, even still. Yeah, maybe. I should think about that. Maybe somebody who's no longer with us kind of thing. Mm. I don't know. I used to call up my dad and tell him what I was doing. He was he was very excited about engineering and stuff. You got his approval? Uh, yeah, a lot. I was lucky. Like he, he decided I was smart and unusual as a kid, and that was okay when I was really young. So when I like did poorly in school, I was dyslexic. I didn't read until I was third or fourth grade, and they didn't care. My parents were like, "Oh, he'll be fine." So cool. I was it's, lucky. That was cool. Is he still with us? You miss him? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, he had Parkinson's and then cancer. His last ten years were tough, and I killed him. Killing a man like that's hard. The mind. Well, it's pretty good. Um, Parkinson's causes slow dementia, and uh, the the chemotherapy I think accelerated it. But it was like hallucinogenic dementia. So he was clever and funny and interesting, and was it was pretty unusual. Do you remember conversations uh, oh, yeah, of from that time? Like, what? Do you have fond memories of the guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anything come to mind? Mm. A friend told me one time I could draw a computer on the whiteboard faster than anybody he'd ever met. And I said, you should meet my dad. Like when I was a kid, he'd come home and say, I was driving by this bridge and I was thinking about it. And he pulled out a piece of paper and he'd draw the whole bridge. <laughs> he was a mechanical engineer. Yeah. And he would just draw the whole thing and then he would tell me about it and tell me how he would have changed it. And he had this, you know, idea that he could understand and conceive anything. And I, I just grew up with that. So that was natural. So if, you know, like when I interview people, I ask them to draw a picture of something they did on a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting. Like some people draw a little box, you know, and then they'll say, and then this talks to this. And yeah. I'll be like, oh, this is frustrating. And then I had this <laughs> other guy come in one time. He says, well, I designed a floating point in this chip, but I'd really like to tell you how the whole thing works and then tell you how the floating point works inside of yeah. it. Do you mind if I do that? And he covered two whiteboards in yeah. like 30 minutes. Yeah. And I hired him. Like yeah. he was great. This craftsman. I mean, that's the craftsmanship to that. Yeah, but also the the mental agility to understand the whole thing, right? Put the pieces in context, you know, like you know, real view of the balance of how the design worked. Because if you don't understand it properly, when you start to draw it, you'll you'll fill up half the whiteboard with like a little piece of it, and you know, like your ability to lay it out in an understandable way it takes a lot of understanding. So. And be able to so zoom into the detail and then zoom out to and the big zoom picture out really fast. And what about the impossible thing? You see, your dad believed that uh, you can do anything. That's a weird feature for a craftsman. Yeah, it seems that that uh, echoes in your own behavior. Yes. Like that's that's the well. It's not that anybody can do anything right now, right? It's that if you work at it, you can get better at it, and there might not be a limit. And they did funny things like, like he always wanted to play piano. So at the end of his life, he started playing the piano when he had Parkinson's wow. and he was terrible. <laughs> but he thought if he really worked at it in this life, maybe the next life, he'd be better at it. He might be onto something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he enjoyed doing it. Yeah. So that's pretty funny. 